Hello, everybody, and welcome. Today, we're going to cover editing imported objects as it relates to Monoport and Archicad. So if you don't know myself, uh, my name is Tom Simmons, and I am the business director and BIM consultant here at Archivista Consulting. So I am going to be taking you through this agenda today. We're going to start with an overview of Archicad's default object import process including a, a, a general overview of sort of the limited editing and polygon management issues that uh, people experience. We're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the difference between planar versus curved elements and morph conversions. We're then gonna get into sort of the meat of, of the discussion today, which is how to import and edit objects with model form. We're gonna view a little bit about the, uh, how you can sort of expand the access to objects uh, through uh, import options with model port, um, how to use its interactive preview editor, adjusting properties of an imported model, uh, object or model, as well as a lot of other uh, uh, important edit uh, uh, topics. We'll then jump into how you can improve 2D and 3D graphics, including how to automate the cleanup of imports and morph conversions, how to use GDL format to customize symbols. And then finally, we're gonna talk about model management, including reducing polygon count to increase performance, and object file size. And of course, we'll have Q&A at the end. So if you do have any questions um, along the way, feel free at any point in time to go ahead and type your question into the control panel. And then I'll take those questions at the end and try to answer those for you. So let's get started. As I mentioned, the first topic we're going to talk about is Archicad's default object import process. So let's start with just kind of a discussion about the, S, the uh, SketchUp SKP and Colada DAE uh, import defaults. I'm sure many of you have used those. Um, they're great for being able to access the 3D warehouse and, and numerous other types of uh, websites and, and libraries and, and, and content out there on the web. But there are limitations. You know, one of the biggest, of course, is limited parametric editing. You know, when you open those objects up into Archicad and you you open that object through the object settings. Uh, you know, you've got limited uh, custom settings here. We've got rotation, scaling, hotspots, that's about it. Now there's no material editing, there's no preview image. And then also, if you're importing in things like uh, a Revit RFA or, or, or um, IFC def, um, uh, uh, model or object, Kind of the same thing, right? We're going to have limited parametric editing, uh, but a, bit, a little bit more. Uh, actually, one of the things that, that Revit does offer the, through the RFA format and when it comes into Archicad is you will see more options for uh, uh, parametric editing there, which is good. Uh, now, there is no preview image. And then, of course, one of the big things for both Revit and for SketchUp, DAE, and other formats or import Archicad is the issue of uh, uh, polygon size and polygon count, which means that it can have a, a big uh, hit on the performance of the object of the model. This sync is a great example. Uh, what's interesting when I brought the sync into Archicad and it was, I was a real have tough time being able to access it and use it. And it's because it was 163,639 polygons for just this object. It took me 43 seconds just to click on the object, to view it, and then to change the material. And I'm sure many of you have kind of experienced this issue with other objects. And that's just because, you know, this came directly from the Color website. And, you know, we've seen a number of manufacturers, um, libraries out there that post objects that are just way too heavy for being able to be used in a BIM program, an application like Archicad. So we're going to kind of walk through and talk through today about how you can manage these kinds of issues. Now, one of the things that is good about using um, SketchUp and, and Revit is that when you bring in, you know, objects that are planar, uh, such as, you know, this, this uh, stove here where, you know, it's pretty rectangular, uh, it does produce really nice uh, 2D graphics. And, you know, when you have objects like this, it's great. You know, there's really not an issue uh, unless you want to maybe edit the materials. That's when it becomes an issue. But nonetheless, in terms of the graphic there, you know, that looks fine. But when we start to bring in something that looks like it should be similar to that uh, stove, it was a pretty rectangular cabinet here, but the sink has curves to it. The, you know, the taps and, and uh, on this sink also have curves to it. And so as a result, we end up with this kind of messy 2D graphic, messy 3D graphics. Um, they can really affect you know, the quality of our, our drawings and our renderings. 
And so this is the kind of thing that we'll also discuss as a way that you can solve this issue and problem with the model for you. And finally, the, you know, one of the solutions that some people will use when they have an object like this cabinet, for example, and they want to be able to edit it, um, you know, but they can't edit the materials because it's not an option with parametrics uh, or within the parameters of the object when you bring it in, uh, is they'll convert it to a morph. And so well, once you convert it to morph, you can edit the material. So that does work. However, uh, there are issues with that depending upon the object. If the object's pretty planar, it makes it easier, but then if it's planar, you may not, you know, may not be as necessary. But um, in any case, you can see here when we convert to a morph, it's going to sh first tell us that this is a high polygon count object. It's got a lot of polygons in here from the curves of the sink, curves of the uh, tap, etc. Um, and uh, just to be, res you know, that may affect the performance of ArchiCAD. So we go ahead and convert it, um, and then we start to select individual surfaces of that mesh or that morph. And as you can see here, it becomes problematic. We've got, you know, some of the surfaces have triangulations in them. So you have to select, you know, multiple triangulation components there to get, you know, it just gets really messy to try to edit these, all these different surfaces here. And it could take a lot of time to do that. And so while this may work on certain objects where maybe there's not as much triangulation or there's not as many surfaces, uh, most of the time it becomes really problematic if it has an object with a lot of detail to it, which is why you typically download and want to access other objects, you don't want to build those because there's a lot of detail to those. So I'm going to talk also about how we can sort of solve that issue. Okay, let's jump into how to import and edit objects with model port and kind of give you a sort of overview of that. So let's first start with sort of the defaults in ARCHICAD for importing objects and the defaults in model port for importing objects. So on the uh, left here, you can see the ARCHICAD defaults. So ARCHI has, you know, some basic defaults here for importing different object uh, uh, model components such as DXF, IFC, uh, SketchUp, Rhino, Collada, uh, DAE, Stereography, <laughs> and of course uh, RFA and ISC. Um, now, those are all available. Now, if we go to the, the um, right-hand side here, we see the defaults. And you can see there's a lot of additional defaults in model port, they're not available within the um, uh, ARCHICAD uh, uh, standards. And there's a 10 additional import formats here, um, in addition to all the other advantages we're going to talk about today. And you can also use uh, model port to not only import these other objects, but also to import art directly from ARCHICAD. So a good example, let's say for um, in model port, we don't have the ability to import an RFA or a Revit object directly into model port. But what we can do is we can import a object that you've already imported through mod, through ARCHICAD's uh, process. So let's say you wanted to go out, um, you're gonna import an RFA object here. So you're gonna go find that object that you downloaded from manufacturer. And you're gonna bring that directly into model port. I'm sorry, into ARCHICAD. And so you're gonna go through the standard process where that gets placed in. And of course it gets placed in, but there is a problem here, that model, was saved so that it was at a different angle or you know different material or whatever it is that is not quite right. So you want to be able to edit that, and maybe you don't have those editing capabilities within that uh, RBT uh, import. So now you're you're kind of trying to figure out what to do. Well, if I were if I had model port, I could select that object that I imported, and then I select the um, import from ArchiCAD object, and now what that's going to do is that's going to import that directly into model port. And we can see that that's vertical. It should be actually laying down horizontal. So we'll just flip that. And now we just simply create that object. And now that becomes part of our library. So this is a very simple example. But the idea here is that you can bring anything in that you can bring into ARCHICAD into model port. So that really opens up any other um, uh, formats that you may not be available within uh, model port or elements, and this is important too, so morphs um, or any elements, walls, whatever, that you want to combine and bring that into model port to create an object uh, uh, that you would then use further. Now, one of the real big benefits to model port is the ability to be able to preview objects before you import. So if you're like me, you download a bunch of objects from a manufacturer or a website, and now you want to uh, look at those objects, but you have to open each object and then they are imported in, and that takes time, 
and then they're, uh, they're uh, imported into your embedded library, and now you've got thousands, maybe thousands, but hundreds and hundreds of, of objects you've imported, and you know, now you've got to go through those, right? And figure out which ones you need to delete, which ones you're going to keep, et cetera. With Bottleport, we can actually import that object and preview it in this preview window before we import it into uh, Archicad. And so that really helps us to, one, know whether we want to import this in, and two, even begin to edit this before we even import it. And then we just simply click that, click that Create button up there in the right-hand corner, left-hand corner, excuse me, and then that uh, creates the object and brings it into Archicad. Now, another uh, useful part of Monoport is the ability to edit by both object or material. So what I mean by that, if you'll look up here in the upper left corner of model port you'll see that little pop up there it says object and i set the object selection mode and that's that little blue cube button if we click that it allows us to start selecting elements by object types so like the interior of this car for example or the body of the car the glass of the car or we can interactively select it in the 3d window where we can select the wheels individually okay as elements to edit now if you want to select it by material then you click the other button just to the right of the object button and now we're able to set the material selection mode now how is that different well now we're going to select it by for example we want to we want to select the interior dark uh, or the interior or the screen color or maybe we're going to go to the wheels we want to do the uh, or the body first or maybe we want to do the interior of the wheel or the actual structure of the wheel or we want to do the wheel the tire you know so this allows us to go in and select it depending upon what we want to do by material or object and it just gives us much more flexibility and much more control now once we've selected those elements we can then change their color their texture and other attributes as well so as a good example you know here we have this uh um table or or or, or um, uh, um, uh, piece of furniture that we brought in right and so we want to be able to edit it maybe it's a little too dark here and so what we're going to do is we're going to select that part of the furniture and we're going to add a texture to it so here's a really nice thing i don't have to have uh if it does not have a texture i can at any point in time add or change the texture after it's come into monoport really quickly and really easily i can also access directly the archicad uh material library here where if i if you just want to go and select and use a material directly from archicad i can do that as well uh, so it gives me the ability to both bring in uh, textures that I might want to use interactively in a model port, uh, as well as to access my standard Archicad material and services library that I'm using within my project. Now, another important aspect to any uh, importing any object uh, that oftentimes you don't have the flexibility on is the ability to, to define the pin weight, the pin color, um, and even fill backgrounds for 2D symbols. So and this is a good example. Here is a uh, oven, right? It's come into model port. And what we want to be able to do is to change the color, which of course will change the line weight of different parts of the stove. So by selecting the stove, we can then select within the our preview window, uh, the stove, stove that we want to maybe make the outside edge black, a darker color perhaps. We want to make the inside uh, edge of it, the um, stove itself, top, a uh, different color with a different line weight, and, and then uh, the knobs also as a different line weight. When we update that, you'll see that it has updated the 3D view uh, in the bottom left, and it's also updated my, um, my plan view as well. And that's the whole point here. We have the ability now to interactively click on individual aspects of the object in the different 3D windows that we have here, and be able to edit those elements. It also allows us to control material properties. So here's a really good example. We brought this, um, this couch in. And the couch looks pretty good, except for one problem. It looks like the sofa, uh, there, the, the, the actual um, uh, cushion, is a little too bright. Probably shouldn't, for fabric, have that kind of uh, brightness uh, for that edge and it's creating some light issues when it bounces off of that. So what we can do, we can select that, <clears throat> and then right here under material, we can change the diffuse uh, uh, amount, so we can reduce that percent, uh, and we can reduce the ambient light, reduce the specular, maybe we need to uh, increase the um, shininess, uh, etc. So by reducing and changing those very quickly, we can change that. We can also go to the Archicad materials, 
And we could just automatically select one from there if we wanted to set one to a specific type of material that was in our, our uh, Surface Catalog that we have in our template. So this gives us the ability on the fly to be able to interactively work with and change not only the materials, but also even get into working and, 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 and um, editing, customizing texture, transparency, ambient, diffuse, shininess, and specular. Again, as well as being able to access both the internal model port properties and the Arc Academy materials as well. Now, another problem we often see uh, is when you download an object, particularly from things like um, uh, user content, like the 3D warehouse or, or others that you know users have posted, right? They'll post the objects and then they may post um, elements within that object that they forgot to turn off, right? Um, and so you download this object, think, oh, it's gonna be this nice light. And it looks great, I'm gonna download that. Um, and I open it up and it's got a rendering inside of it. And you know, then you're like, how do I edit this? How do I change this? So within model port, what I can do is I can go into this, uh, put in the 3D, uh, the preview window here. I can select that image, I can either delete it or I can turn it off. So I have the ability with those eyes to turn it off uh, temporarily if I want, or I can also just delete it if I don't want it. And so that really helps, right? So now I've been able to get this to what I want it to look like. And then in the, 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 the preview window over there, um, well, I can update first the uh, plan view by clicking the update button. And then I'll go to the preview window over here and I'll update the preview image as well. Now that preview image is what you will see, and, you'll, and I'll show you this in a second. But it's what you'll see in the uh, object settings dialog when you open that up and you're selecting objects. So you know if you bring in uh, a, a Archie, an object into Archicad from SketchUp or any other source, it comes up and it does not have a preview to it. Monoport gives you a preview automatically and you can update that preview uh, as well at any point in time. Now one of the other advantages to um, uh, the preview window here is its ability as, to be interactive, not just for editing, um, I mean turning off elements, uh, deleting elements, changing color, but also for changing scale. So as you'll see with this lamp here, there are some dimensions there that are really quite off. I think it's like 36 feet by you know, 14 feet, which I think is a little large for this particular lamp, right? So whoever drew this uh, and modeled it, uh, obviously modeled it the wrong size. So we can actually go in here now and we can click one of those. So we can click the height and click the width. We can click um, the depth. And when we click that, it just automatically opens up a dialog here for me just to very easily type in the uh, rescale. And so I then fit to window, click a little button there. Uh, we have now resized that really quickly, really easily. Uh, now it makes more sense uh, in terms of that sizing uh, for both the width, the height, and the depth of that object. But this is what you'll find within model port and what we're doing more and more uh, with the uh, preview window is we're adding the ability to, uh, for you to interactively edit elements, interactively edit uh, um, content and other, other elements within that, which I think will really help to um, help your process. Now, once you have edited an element and you clicked uh, import, you know, to create that element, element and you place it in ArchiCAD, you probably at points in time are going to want to re-edit that element. And here's how you do it. There's two ways of doing that. One is you zoom to the element, you select it, you'll see a little uh, pop-up uh, dialog that comes up there uh, called MP. You can kind of see there right next to the arrow. And when you click the MP button here, it's going to open up that model port uh, uh, dialog here uh, where you can now edit and preview that element. So that's, this, that's how it works with a model port. It, it's meant to be an interactive process. So once you've imported and placed that object, you can continue editing it. And anytime you select an element that was created and imported by model port, you'll see an MP palette by it. If it's not an object, uh, from model port, it's just a standard Archicad object or some other object, uh, you will not see the MP. And that's how it differentiates model port objects from other objects. <clears throat> Additionally, whenever you open the object settings of an object, you'll see uh, in one of the panels at the bottom is called model port. And if you open that up, there's a button that says open a model port editor. And you just click that, it'll go right into the editor you, you just saw. It's another really easy way of doing it. If you 
are going through your library and you find an object that you had imported earlier and maybe you haven't placed it into the project yet, um, you can open the model port editor, edit it, and then place it. So now let's talk a little bit about how to improve 2D and 3D graphics. So first off, model port is designed to automatically clean up uh, the graphics for 2D and 3D when you import the object, okay? So as you kind of see with this example here um, that I showed earlier as well, when we import a SketchUp or DAE object, we'll often see this kind of really um, uh, sort of triangulated, messy graphics in 2D, right? And so when we import the object, it will clean it up, and that's what you see with model port on the right-hand side, right? It looks really good. Now, in addition to that, if we go to 3D, um, you'll see that it does the same thing in 3D, right? So the model port uh, object is going to look much cleaner. It's going to get rid of all that uh, triangulation on that those those polygons, and it's going to look uh, like a much better object. Now, you can also convert objects to morphs to improve graphics as well. So you'll remember earlier I mentioned that you could bring in a, a Revit object, right? Uh, using Archicad's kind of standard merge uh, from file, uh, or, or sorry, the standard Archicad uh, process of of importing uh, and converting a Revit RFA object into an Archicad object, and then you could bring that into model form. You can do the same thing with SketchUp. So what we're going to what I'm going to show you here is by using this you know, kind of process of inter interoperability and merge merge file, right? We can then uh, once it's placed, um, we oops, let me go back to that. Here we go. Uh, you can select your SketchUp file. You can bring that in and place that, right? And when you place that, it's going to convert to that SketchUp file, and it may take a minute, it may take five seconds, depending on how busy or how big it is, um, and lots of different things. But nonetheless, it's converted it, but we have a very messy object because it has a lot of curves to it. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that object uh, and right click it, and then I'm going to say convert selection to more. Now, what this is allowing me to do is it's going to convert that to a morph. And so it's going to kind of get rid of all that triangulation, right? And now it's just going to show those these as morph elements. And so it's going to clean it up in a sense. But if I if I were to um, uh, not have this in, in model port, it would still look cluttered, right? But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it into model port. You can see now there at the bottom left that the 2D symbol has been cleaned up. And so that's the whole point here is we can very quickly and very easily, even if the object is not uh, a format that we support in model port, we can still uh, 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 use model port to help clean up and manage objects through the import from Archicad option as well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can uh, update that object preview. Here's a good example where we brought an object, oops, brought an object in. And so if we want to change that object to maybe a different view, we can click that little button here and say update preview image. And when we do that, and we now open up those object settings, uh, we'll update first the object. And we're going to update that object. We can double click the object settings and we can see now that that preview has been updated for the object. So that's, again, part of this process, right? To be able to go through and, um, and really, you know, uh, have a nice library that that has these preview of the objects and you don't have to go through a lot of background to actually do that. Okay, let me talk about another process here. This is how you would customize symbols by converting the object to GDL. Okay, so in Monoport, we have the ability to set uh, it to a Monoport format to a GDL format or to a GDL with model port format. And I'll talk about those in more detail in a second, but in specifics, if you look down here in the bottom uh, right corner here, you can see those three options right here, okay? <clears throat> so we said to GDL, then what it's gonna be is, that's kind of the standard Archicad uh, uh, scripting and, and format that's used for all the objects, right? The model port is our proprietary format that, that has a lot of advantages, which I'll also talk about again in a few more minutes. But the idea here is if you set it to the GDL format, right, and you click the update button, then uh, what it's going to do is it's now going to be a GDL object. So I can now select that object. I can select the file menu, and I can select libraries and objects and open object. Now, when I do this, it's going to open it up into Archicad's native uh, library part editor. Okay, where we can edit the object, 
uh, in sort of the GDL environment that you, you is, is sort of the background environment for objects. It will come up with this one warning down here in the bottom left. It says the library part was created with an external editor. You can change it with ARCHICAD, but these changes will be lost if you edit it with its own editor later. So what this means is that, and I'll talk about this in a second, is that it's going to convert this to GDL, right? Um, and then if we try to take it back into model port again later, it's going to get rid of these edits that we're going to do to the 2D symbol. So if you want to edit that object beforehand, kind of get it to the exact materials you want um, and so forth, uh, then you can take kind of at that point, uh, edit the symbol further uh, to try to get, uh, you know, there's still some editing you want to do the symbol. So now that we open it up, this is the uh, library part editor, if you've not seen that before. And you'll notice there's a bunch of options here on the left-hand side. Details, parameters, migration. We're not going to go into all those. We're going to keep this really simple. And we're just going to go down to the 2D button down there. And we're going to click that. When we click that, we're going to see, you know, this 2D script here. This gets created by Monoport automatically. And all we need to do is just select that script and what's called comment. You can see there on the right, uh, there's a little red um, uh, a little button right here. If we click that button with everything selected, it'll put a little comment in front of it. What that does is it basically um, uh, makes that script inactive. Okay, so it's no longer going to um, use the default model port um, uh, symbol that it created. It's instead going to allow you to not edit that symbol. So now that we've done that, we now click the 2D symbol button toward the bottom of that library part editor, as you can kind of see in the dashed red line below. And that will open up our 2D symbol view where you can see we can edit. In fact, if you now look at our toolbar to the left there under document, we now have the ability to use text, lines, circles, fills, um, splines, hotspots, 2D editing tools, right? So that means that we can go into our uh, symbol view here. We can delete the lines. We can uh, delete those. We can add new ones. We can change, edit anything that's there. And in other words, we can clean up and customize this 2D symbol specifically. So what this gives you the ability to do, right, is that if I've got some specific symbols where they're really messy, um, even with model ports cleanup, you know, that it does, there's still some things you would like it to be able, be able to clean up a little bit better, then you can kind of get it customized the way you want it to look material-wise first. And then once you've done that, then go into this process to do the symbol. Because once I delete that and then save that, right, and use save as, don't just save, because if you save, it's still going to be uh, using the old model port uh, uh, um, format or not model port. It's, it's still going to be recognized by model port uh, as an object. So you want to go save as, okay? And then when you save as and give it a new name, then it will be completely unlinked from model port. And you can just use it as a normal uh, object in ARCHICAD, but it will all nicely cleaned up. And this is another way that you can actually kind of combine model port with a sort of standard uh, GDL editor uh, to get a really customized object uh, in terms of the symbol uh, in the end. Okay, let's talk next about managing imported models. This is a really important subject. So we've talked a lot about some of the issues that we can, uh, and I'm sure many of you have experience with performance issues of objects when you import them to ARCHICAD or perhaps when um, you bring in models, et cetera, um, as you place them down from manufacturers and stuff, they can be really heavy. Good example is this tree here, right? Let's say we want to do a bunch of landscaping um, and um, we want to be able to, uh, you know, bring in some trees, some foliage, and not just use the standard ones out of ARCHICAD because most of them looks horrible. Well, we bring these things in and they're very high polygon count. And the thing is, we don't really need them to be so high because we're never going to be that close. Uh, so we can reduce down that polygon count really easily. And here's how we do it. So here we've got the, the tree, right? But when we're ready to, to edit this tree, we simply select the, the tree object there. Um, and then we go to poly reduce and we click freeze geometry. And then we can also decimate the steps up or down, change it from two to three or one. Um, and you can see how just by selecting that without even getting into editing, um, the decimation steps, which basically just increases or decreases the amount of, of uh, uh, polygon reduction. By doing that, we have really reduced down the amount of 
of polygons here. So we've reduced this down to 18.2 for four percent, I think it is, um, to start with. And we could go further down as well. Uh, and so really, we can start getting this down quite a, considerably. And for a tree, you would never even notice it because you're never going to look that closely at it. But it, it gives you that ability to have some good content that you can bring in and control the performance of it. Just like the sink I had earlier, I could have done the same thing, right? I could have taken that Revit sink, I converted it over, and I could have then taken it into model port, and I could have actually started to use this poly reduction to be able to manage that file size a bit. Now, you remember I mentioned earlier that we have three different save modes. Uh, we were using the GDL a minute ago for that object that we customized, but we also have the model port uh, save mode, and we have the GDL with model port save mode. So what is the difference between these two? So the default is the model port save mode. What that does is that will reduce the file size of the object. So it's maintaining that file size as up to eight times smaller, which is significant when you start adding all these objects up that you're bringing into your project. If you want to use the standard uh, uh, format, uh, you can set that to GDL, and that's the standard format out of the box with ARCHICAD. Or you can combine the two. Okay, now if you combine the two, GDL and model port, uh, then what happens is that you can share that object with anybody else, and whether they have model port or not, they'll be able to use that. If you are working with someone um, that, uh, and you're using the model port format for your objects, and you want them to be, be able to use uh, the file as well, and they don't have a model port uh, on their computers that they bought, you can actually have them just install model port for free, and when they install model port, uh, they will then also, also be able to take advantage of the file reduction of these objects as well. So that's really important. So here we go. If we take a look at GDL, let's, let's look at how this works. So if I update this and I click the update button, it's going to update that file, right? And now I'm going to go to my file menu. And when I go to my file menu, I open up the library manager, I'm going to notice that that now with the GDL is 13 megabytes in size. And so you remember I said that this is eight times smaller. So now I'm going to go ahead and, let's see, oh, it didn't quite work there. Sorry about that. Now, let me go back to that for just a second. I'm not sure what happened there. All right, so, give a second, there we go, we're gonna close that. And now if we change this to model port, and we do the same thing, we update, uh, that uh, file. Now I'll go back to the file menu, go to library manager, and now we click that same file in our library manager, you'll see it's 2.2 megabytes. So going from 13 down to 2.2 is very significant. And so this is what we regularly see is about eight times smaller uh, in terms of the compression size that model is able to add to these objects. Now we also can manage multiple models. So that means that you don't you're not just limited to one model to open up a model port at a time i can open up a number of different objects and models at the same time and i can also batch import which is really important let's say for example that you have a number of different objects from manufacturers you've downloaded or from 3d warehouse wherever you, you download the the objects and you'd like to just open them up all at the same time so you just click open and they will all then uh, merge um, into your editor um, and then if you open up the object here object settings, you'll see that we have all those objects imported in, and then you can begin to open those in the editor to start editing them. Okay, I know I've covered a lot today. Uh, so uh, for those of you who have not yet used a model port uh, and would like to kind of check it out, demo it, try it out, uh, here's how you do that. So basically go to our website, to archvista.com slash model port. You can click the uh, download trial button there. It'll take you to this web page and simply enter your email in. And then when you click download now, it'll take you to a web page where you can download model port for um, whatever version of ARCHICAD you have, um, uh, as well as Mac or Windows. This is actually a good quote from one of our clients. Uh, we released model port 3.0 model port 3 a couple of months back. And Chuck has been using it, uh, and he's, he said that it's actually one of the best versions he's used, of uh, the three versions that he's, he's used thus far. So uh, we're getting some good feedback on it. 
and hopefully you'll see uh, good feedback in using it as well. So with that, I am going to go ahead and um, take questions. So again, as I mentioned earlier, if you have questions, please feel free to go ahead and enter those in now. Uh, if you have already entered any questions, I'm going to go ahead and check those in a second. But uh, for those who have questions, enter them into the control panel, uh, and I will see those on my end. And let me take a uh, uh, let me go ahead and take a look. Also, I just wanted to um, uh, note if you have any questions, you can email us as well at info at uh, This is our, our number that you can call directly as well. Um, and let me take a look at the questions. <clears throat> 